internet, and welcome once again to the Free to Play Cast, brought to you by MMOBomb.com, your home for all things free to play related. I'm your host, Mike Byrne, aka Magic Man, and this is episode 359. We're doing it live over on twitch.tv slash MMOBomb. If you can make it on Fridays at 1 p.m. Eastern, we've been doing the show live for about a month and a half, two months now, and then posting it to YouTube for those of you that can't make it, but you're all more than welcome to come check out the stream live. Uh, or our Monday through Friday streams there at 2 p.m. Eastern, where usually me, sometimes Jason, sometimes both of us, uh, sometimes some other guests come in and we'll be streaming some type of free-to-play game. We've got a lot of small news for you this week. So we've kind of broken it up into a couple a couple uh, topics, a couple sections for you. Joining me to go over all of it, welcome back after a week off, Mr. Jason Winter. You're looking refreshed, sir. How are you? I am. Yeah, you look refreshed. I feel kind of, kind of tired, and I'm got a little hungry and whatever. So, but if you say so, I guess I'll be refreshed. Are you grumpy? No, no, just, nah. <laughs> just day the... eight hundred and thirty-four of quarantine or lockdown or whatever. It's right. A, they're all just kind of blending together. It's just a gray, continuous gray haze. It is October already. It is October. Really? What year? It's still 2020? It's still 2020. It feels like the months go quickly. The year does not. (laughs) Mm. Also on the line to go over all of it, Miss Quinlan Bowers. What's up, Q? We're never getting out of 2020. It's just going to reset. We'll we'll hit like December 29th and suddenly find yourself back in, in early 2020 again. I hope not. God, I hope not. That would be awful. Groundhog year. That would be awful. My hair on the right is sticking up. It's all sticking up. It's fine. It all sticks up. It'll be. It'll That's be. What up. hair does? Stick up. My hair sticks up. It's fine. That's my stylist was out. Uh, normally, I have a production team that comes in and gets me all ready for the cast, and I gave him the day off. <laughs> That's not true. So let's slide over and get started with the news. All right. Well, we got a mini rapid fire round for you, but it's especially rapid fire because it's all about shooter games. You yeah. just thought you were so clever with that joke. Yeah. <laughs> it's, no, That's Mike's one joke for the month, by the way, guys. You can get another one until November. Uh, I even wrote in the show notes, get it? <laughs> just and a- I hated it the minute I saw it. I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did. <laughs> Yeah. All right, solo cast today. Q and Jason have decided to leave. So, uh, But yes, we do have a lot of uh, news from shooter games for you in a little rapid fire around here. Let's start with... Uh, I actually want to do the, the one that I have listed in the notes here. I didn't realize I listed it first. Let's do that last. Let's, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, God, I have my tabs all set up too. Damn it. Let's do that one I last. know. It's just <laughs> going and screwing up our entire thing. <laughs> Uh, so first off, Jason, you did the first look for this a while ago. Hyperscape is getting ready to uh, add Season 2. Actually went underway three days ago. So you have Season 2 available for you. Added a couple new modes, some, some new weapons, daily gifts. This was kind of a bigger update for Hyperscape kicking off its second season since it became available for people to play. What all do we have to look forward to here, Mr. Winter? Yeah, they made little updates and added a few things here and there throughout the first season. And this one is now their full second season launch, which has a, a new gun, the Atrax, which is like a sticky grenade gun. You like launch it. If it hits someone directly, it'll blow up right on them or it can hit the ground and they'll blow up after a short delay. So the key point is it makes things blow up. So that's what you always want. Kaboom. Gun. Yeah, lots of kabooming. Uh, they have a new hack, which is kind of new. It's a platform. It's like a vertical thing but you used to be able to do a, you can still do the, the horizontal thing so let's just say that it's not the most challenging programming job they probably had they're just like we need a new hack for the new season what if we took the wall we moved it sideways oh great new hack there we go all right <laughs> so that was not not the most innovative thing for being honest um they got a new part of the map a new uh, uh building called the Mor- the memorial which is meant to commemorate everyone who was lost during the blackout which was a thing that happened, I guess, and people died in the hyperscape because if you're if you're doing a, 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 a fiction set in a virtual world, it has to be possible for people to get stuck inside it and die because that's what everybody does in these things. 
because then the virtual world is real. Ooh. I haven't even I've not even seen Ready Player One, but I bet that's part of it. <laughs> Chat, tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me people can get inside this world and and die. If you die in the game, you die in the real world. Did you, you didn't read the book then either? I take no, it. no, I've okay. not seen, I know nothing about it other than the Will Wheaton did the book on tape thing version. But I I'm... I saw the movie, but it was so unmemorable that yeah. I. I you actually don't remember if that's the case. Yeah, the movie you isn't great. What the plot was. Yeah, the movie is not great. Yeah, but but anyway, they also have a couple new game modes. Uh, one called the floor is that lava. That is very which is Sword Art Online, though. And that and yeah, you know, all Sword Art Online, dot hack, hack. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I know. I've seen I've seen all of them practically, and it's yeah. But anyway, floor is lava, which is literally the, the ground is lava, and you want to not be on it probably. I mean, maybe it feels good. Who knows? But probably not. In in small bursts, maybe. In small bursts of lava, yeah, yeah. And then they have like a dual mode too, so to go along with their triple mode they've had before. So they also Q put in a ton of different quality of life. They changed the ranking system a little bit. Uh, damage fall off for long range, long range weapons, uh, or at long range for all weapons. So there were some, you know, the typical stuff we would see in a shooter that that just launched here. I want to ask you though, because you're not generally a shooter gal. Uh, you know, you have, I believe, sometimes they make you sick. Uh, as far as like a vertigo type thing with the the first person camera a lot of the time. But I want to ask you, do supplemental modes, things like the the floor is lava, where shooting is not necessarily the mechanic and stuff like that, do those modes even like remotely entice you, generally not a shooter person, to give a shooter a try? Or are those just so you know, extraneous to, to the game that you're like, well, yeah, that mode might be interesting, but that's one mode and, and it's not even the main mode. So forget it. I'll just go play something else. Uh, no, because I'm so bad at shooters as a result of, you know, the, the motion sickness thing and everything. I mean, the motion sickness comes in from first person. Right. So if it's a third person, I can technically, but I'm so bad at them that I just, I don't want to torture other people with my playing in these multiplayer things so i stick to single player shooters if i play them at all and so yeah none of the rest of that stuff is going to matter because i just avoid multiplayer shooters in general so nobody has to deal with my really really bad playing <laughs> jason what do you think of like these extracurricular modes in games that are super dedicated they're not they're not like a game that has eight different game modes to begin with. You know, it's a battle royale. You go in, there's a couple maybe variants on whether you can do one person, two person, squads of four, whatever. I, I'm just trying to get a, a bead here because recently I've been sinking a lot of time into Rocket League. And one of the things in the stage one of the season pass, it's the last thing that I have to clear so that I can get into stage two is to get a certain, I think it's 5,000 points in extra modes. And I actually hate playing like the extra tacked on modes in Rocket League. I just don't enjoy them. Like the one I can stomach the the most is um uh the the ice hockey one. I don't even remember what it's called. Uh, uh Snow Day. The floor is ice. Yeah. <laughs> Snow Day. The floor is ice. And so like I sometimes hate extra modes that feel like we're trying to add something to the game, add something a little different, something fun to go do like in between matches and let the anger sharks, you know, swim away after a bad match or, sh or so. But I hate them because they always end up in like the season passes and stuff. And if I don't enjoy these extracurricular modes, I end up having to do them in some regards anyway. That's why I'm asking this question because yesterday I was like, mm -hmm. last night I was like, oh, God, I just need 2,000 more points <laughs> and I could get the hell out of here. So I don't know. It really doesn't do anything for me in a shooter game to add these types of things. But maybe there is, you know, somebody like you that, hey, I'm really into this shooter and cool. There's another new mode. That's awesome. No. No. Uh, you, long, long answer. Yeah, no, I really don't really get into like alternate modes in, in any any kind of game with a shooter or an RPG or something. Because first of all, it is usually divorced from the main progression in the main game. So it's like, sure, I can get good in lava mode or whatever. But it's especially if it's a limited time mode, it's gonna be gone in like three weeks. So yeah, was, I try it once to see if I like it, and ninety percent of the time I don't. And also, it's just. It, it does feel like it's often just tacked on, like just sort of an extra thing. Like I said, you know, I made fun of the platform. Like, oh, they just decided to do this. Well, this is just decided to make the floor glowy and have it do damage. So it's like, that's not really that innovative to me. Yeah. So it doesn't really strike me as things I usually want to do that much in any kind of 
any kind of game. I also don't understand when they do them limited time. Like I would, I totally understand it when a game does it and they're like, Hey, you know, we got this kind of idea for a little mode. We're going to put it in right now, gather a bunch of feedback and then make a decision if we want to move forward. Fine. I get that being limited time, but limited time for the sake of being limited time, I think is just trying to capitalize on that yeah. whole FOMO uh, mentality. It's oh. just, it's getting, it's trying to get new press releases on our website. That's <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. All right, moving on to the next shooter, Valorant from uh, Riot Games. They're making more a uh, competitive type of changes here going into Act 3. They're tightening up the skill ranks, the disparity. They are adding a new map, some other things as well there, Jason. So this is more, I think, geared towards... Th- this update seems to be more geared towards the esports side of this, the very competitive side of this, not necessarily your Saturday casuals like you and, and I. There are casual people who play Valorant, really? <laughs> what is the point of that? <laughs> <laughs> they made this from day one, so this is going to be the next great esport, and it has to be viewed by ten thousand people at all times, or whatever. So, yeah, I, I, I can't see Valorant ever actually, you know, giving into the casuals in any way. So, yeah, of course they're going to put a very large emphasis on their competitive aspect of the game, and I think they even say something like that's at the heart of the game, or whatever like that. So, yeah, they're they're going to be. And the funny thing is, I read some of the stuff, and I think this is exactly the same stuff that Overwatch went through like a few years ago when they were hammering out their competitive mode. You know, having it so because what they used to have was like people, but they were they have a lot of different levels, but the they had some people within like six levels could group together because they because they wanted to be a thing where you could play with your friends, could group competitively with your friends. Which of course, you know, again, that's what a casual game wants to do: play with your friends, have a yeah. good time. Oh yeah. But when you're in competitive, if my rank is here and your rank is down here, and you're we're pals. We're going to get in a match together where I destroy everyone and you get destroyed by everyone. So that's not fun. So they narrow that up. So only three rank, you have to be three ranks together to uh, actually play with each other. And again, Overwatch did the same thing. They made it so that you can only, you have to be within a certain rank now to pair with someone in competitive. So Lind- yeah, I, I don't see why you wouldn't have that all the time. Linderman chiming in in chat. Hope we get some shiny silver Rocket League after this. No, today today is Arcane Showdown. Probably be doing um, uh, a little bit of Rocket League tonight on Ready Check Radio. So, also comment that the new uh, Conqueror's Blade season drops next week, so there might be a stream of that at some point. Oh, all right. Yeah, you now just Jason's tell me the excited. Day. Yeah, Jason's yeah. I, I just thought to bring it up with you. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, there was no strategy section of news this week. So. <laughs> yeah, I got nothing else to talk about. I play shooters except Valorant, which I remember I couldn't wait to un- uninstall. Yeah, them. I didn't enjoy Valorant either, and and it's probably because it was made you know more for the competitive side of things, and I'm just not good enough to to be even remotely competitive at shooters. So I kind of just lost interest right away in it. I mean, we had fun streaming it that day, Jason, but it was not something that I'm going to let take up hard drive space. New map, you got the ice box uh, was also teased. Uh, I do like, Q, they're kind of uh, considering region-based leaderboards instead of just global region boards and even restricting Q size for Immortal Plus ranked games. So that's like the higher end of the, the highest end of their, uh, of their rankings throughout the entire Valorant. So, I mean, it is, I like seeing, like, in Rocket League, I'm not compared or played uh, against, you know, grandmasters or anything unless they're smurfing on some account or anything like that and so okay great i see this i get it doesn't make me want to play it because it's just not a game for me but i'm sure the more competitive valorant players uh, appreciate most of these changes i would imagine well yeah and if you're making a game that's designed to be you know like this is your thing you want an esports the you know highly competitive game then th- these are all you know reasonably good changes to make as far as like the the casual thing or whatever yeah it's it, i don't think it really matters what changes they make that way they're they're not necessarily going to just pull in a whole bunch of casual people that are actually going to stick around when the game is so obviously driven towards you know the high end competitive yeah. type stuff it's fine if that's what you want out of your game that's totally fine I think it does, though, when you when you put so much in the competitive basket, or, and this is any type of game, you do 
knowingly restrict the potential audience of people that are going to play it and therefore have to make the game go above and beyond its competition to a greater degree to try and attract the audience. And I don't know necessarily if Valorant is doing that yet. You need to pull away the Overwatch players, Jason. You need to, or at least a a small percentage of them. You need to take from Overwatch. You need to take from CSGO. You need to take from these highly populated, established, competitive shooter games if you're going to go squarely into that, hey, this is competitive. Sure, you could play casually, but we develop this more for competitive viewpoint. You shrunk your audience, and I don't know if Valorant necessarily, at least in my own casual opinion, does enough different between Overwatch, CSGO, even Team Fortress 2 to really entice that market. Funny thing is, I follow the Overwatch League, and they've actually had a significant number of players who quit the league this year to play Valorant instead. So I'm dead wrong. So that's been a thing. <laughs> that's been a thing. Now, Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, now, what I can agree, that what I can say, though, is when you don't attract the casuals, all you get are those ultra hardcores. And maybe that's good for viewership, but it's bad for player base, it's bad yeah. for number of players. And especially if you know, like say everyone would be rating their skill level in like one to 10. All right. So if you make a competitive game, you're going to lose the ones because they're, they're not going to want to play. Right. Well, now the twos are the worst and they're going to kill by everybody above them. So they're going to leave. So now the threes are the worst. They kill by everyone and so on and so forth. Eventually, you got to run like the eights and up are still around. So that's only like 30% of your base. Not quite, doesn't work that way for numbers, but you still get the idea that it can be an issue in terms of, like I said, actual player base. Now, maybe viewers like watching that, like watching the super competitive stuff. And that's true, but you're probably not as likely to see casual people streaming it. In fact, let me just see. Probably, it's, I'm probably going to be dead wrong on this. Let me just see what like the Twitch viewership right now is for like Valorant as compared to. Uh, like Overwatch. Jason and his uh, numbers, Q. Jason and his numbers. Actually, I, I like Valorant. the numbers, though. I, I mean, it's too. not stuff I, I go too. digging into. I loved I, when I, we I, did the High Low show. None actually, of you Valorant watched the damn really thing, but I love doing it. <laughs> Valorant is doing quite a bit better than Overwatch right now. On no, Twitch, see, then so I'm, I'm just dead right wrong. A good, so we're, good all, we're all wrong. We don't know what the hell we're talking about. Well, I'm honestly surprised right. that it's doing that well. I. And again, well, when I say a lot, I say like four or five players in the Overwatch League have moved over. So maybe it's not like, you know, huge. Yeah, it's not like mass like migration players. or anything. But well, it is, we, but it is not doing, last year, it is doing what I, mean, I said it had to do. Dip in and pull yeah. from each of these. Go ahead, Kate. Let me ask something, though. The, the Overwatch players that are shifting, would are, are they higher tier or kind of like, like middling? And if they move to another game and kind of hop in... And they, you know, like they would just end up being at the top naturally because all the other top people are still in Overwatch. It's the Overwatch League. This is a pro league. These yeah, are the so best it's the players. pros. So, yeah. Regardless of whether they're the best pros about, or whether, the worst pros, random, they're pros. <laughs> yeah, I don't know whether you're random, you know, high ranked players going over. I'm just talking about the few that I see in the Overwatch League. All right, moving yeah. on with more shooters. Apex Legends. Implements PC and console cross-play, finally. Lots of people have been waiting for this, but it's not its not 100% just apparently the easiest thing for them to do, Jason. They had some challenges with this one. Yeah, and I have to read the article to try to remember what they were. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not the only one who forgets what I wrote. <laughs> that was like three days ago. <laughs> I remember uh, like four uh, hours ago. Uh, very strong. Everyone's thinking of crossplay, disabled cross. I'm not even gonna vamp. I'm gonna just leave it here and just watch you read. <laughs> Seriously, they don't talk about it being difficult. That's the other thing they talked about being. That was another thing I wrote about yesterday. They talked about having it being difficult. No, no, no. That was the implementation being difficult. This I was talking more about the way that it works between PC and console. There's no cross progression yet. Uh, even though the developer does think that you know every multiplayer game should have cross play and cross progression. Well, that was the other game. No, that's that's this the one. other. No, that was Spellbreak. No, 
You can disable crossplay if you want, and there's no cross progression yet, though it's something the dev teams believe a valuable feature for future implementation. Yeah, but it was the Spellbird guys who said it was difficult. Yeah, that's, that's not what, what I'm, I'm getting talking confused. about. Uh, <laughs> I know. That, why did you tell me that they said it was difficult? I did. I said it's not no, exactly the easiest difficult. cross play in the well, world. It is in beta format. You can party up with other players on PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. But any match that includes a player from the PC and consoles will automatically take place on PC servers. So it's not the easiest of cross plays here as far as the implementation goes. You will After be setups go, that was not the best one. All right. So I hit it, <laughs> I hit it out of bounds. <laughs> So, yeah, if you are teamed up, you know, if Jason and I, I'm on PC and he's on PlayStation and we team up and we queue, it's going to be on PC servers. So rip console player uh, in most cases there. <laughs> yeah, because they, they aren't doing aim assist. Wasn't that, wasn't that part of it? Aim assist and then just general not as precision controls versus uh, keyboard and mouse. So, Which is why you need aim assist. Right. Uh, again, no cross progression yet. That's coming. Uh, or at yeah. least is hoped to be coming. So this was a pretty pretty big feature Apex Legends players wanted, Q. So I, I think they got to be happy that at least it's moving in that direction. I still am just absolutely befuddled on why cross-save and cross-progression is such an issue. I, I understand it from like a cash shop perspective, but there is nothing worse than me buying something a skin or a decal uh in in a game on playstation 4 and then logging into the pc trying to put it on and realizing ah shit i can't because i bought that on the ps4 I and mean, that is just infuriating to me yeah that is super freaking annoying and it's just i mean that has more to do right with the with the stores oh yeah on consoles than really or you know the the, the variety of stores we have on pc then anything else it's it, like you would think if it was just that like just the developers developing the stuff and putting it out and it would just you know i mean obviously there's still challenges to the whole cross play progression thing in general anyway even if you're just doing a new game from scratch because of the differences in the systems but yeah the the shop things that's I mean, you've really just kind of got to be mad at Sony and Microsoft mm -hmm. and everybody for that. Well, if if you read the Spellbreak interview, he actually talks about why it's difficult to do crossplay. The guy there, he says there, uh, there's the raw wait, technical challenge. We're, we're going to get to that. Yeah. It's not in the it, list. It's not on our. It is, is in it the is list. It is in the list. Oh, it is. <laughs> Let's wait down there. It's okay. Section Damn three. Jason's just like. Phew. Okay, fine. All right, Mikey, I'm, I'm, control. <laughs> it wasn't uh, in this list. <laughs> it's not a shooter. It's not a shooter. <laughs> it sort of is. No, it's not. You fire you shoot fireballs. Okay, so it goes pew pew, but it's still not a shooter. <laughs> swear you'd think this was episode three, not three hundred and fifty. Fuck, I took a week off. I forgot everything. <laughs> Uh, one thing that we did forget to mention on the Valorant side of things is that that is supposed to launch on the 13th, right? That, For sure. What's the... Because <laughs> no, really, but, really, but the competitive kind of, revamp, kind of, yeah, might be. not be coming till the 27th. So it's... Just check check the website. Check MMOBomb.com. Jason's been keeping them up because one of the, the new character was delayed too, right? Right, right. Yeah, so... Because that's where they put the map in earlier because they right. do that. So. Yeah. So, yeah, forgot to cover that on the Valorant part for those of you that are looking for that. 13th, but could be later. Uh, last item in the shooter rapid fire round, and this one is to me um, for a couple reasons, and I'm really interested, Q, in your take on this being a, a high-res fan uh, and knowing quite a bit of the team at, at nine different companies that are under the high-res banner now. Rogue Company just recently came out of, you know, it's, it's early access, you know, closed stuff. Now you can go and play it and it'll probably be in an open beta for nine years. Cause that's just what high res does. But apparently it's doing pretty well. It's doing pretty well. 
Uh, High Res co-founder and CEO uh, Stuart Chisholm uh, tweeted that Rogue Company uh, initially tweeted more people have played Rogue Company in the last 24 hours than have ever played any high res game in a 24 hour period before. And then added an amendment to that tweet saying today Rogue Company had 25% more people play than yesterday meaning 50% more people played Rogue Company today than have ever played any other high-res game, Smite, Paladins, Realm Royale, in a single day. Approximately 2.5 million new players since open beta started mid-Wednesday, so a little over a week ago. And this is not to disparage Rogue Company or anything. That is one that actually is still installed on my PC, and we did stream it over on Ready Check Radio before, um, maybe I think two weeks ago. So it is one that is still installed. I'm not disparaging the game here. But Q, this is kind of stunning to me. Like, okay, fine, it beat Realm Royale. Yeah, I, fine. It beat Paladins. You know what? Looking at it today, I'm not all that surprised about that one either. Paladins had a huge influx of players, then made a bunch of changes that t diced their audience, then tried to rebound from it. Okay, there's been some swing there. But Smite, and I'm, th I'm not, not talking like, okay, right now, Smite might be a little lower than it was X years ago. Fine, I get that. But ever? Ever? So, I mean, I think Smite, Smite, it, Smite's always kind of been more or less, I, I think, steady, like, there, there never really was a huge upshoot on the game that, that I recall. And, you know, that's even with, like, all their esports focus and everything else. I think it just built a really solid player base and more or less kept the base and yeah, it's probably dropped some because there's 30 million MOBAs now and, you know, all of that jazz and people get mad at them every so often for, you know, whatever it is that they've done in the game at this point and, and stuff like that. And they got mad at them when they started making other games, you know, kind of like happened with CCP and EVE Online. <laughs> like yeah, and like when gl Global Agenda went away and all that stuff. Right, yeah, just various things. So there, there's kind of like the, the the little bit of up and down of just like high res games in general. But I don't know. Like when I was writing this up, my only thought was, well, maybe it is literally because it is a shooter, and shooters are just one of those game types that everybody's familiar with. We all understand the basics, and yeah, there's kind of some battle royal at royale elements like the diving in and all of that stuff, but. It, Maybe it's it's just that 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 makes the difference. Um, I, I'm I'm not really sure because I don't know. I don't feel like they've you know like pimped the game out any heavier than they have anything else they've ever done or anything like that. I, so yeah, the only thing the but the other difference is is that it pretty much came out on uh, all platforms at once. Yeah. And that, right, because like my right, PC only when it started, mo mo most of their, this is the first game that they've put out on all the platforms at once and kind of, you know, worked to implement crossplay up front and all, all of I, that I think jazz. Realm Royale did. I, it, didn't Realm Royale push? Uh, granted, that one, I'm just like, that would be a lower audience to begin with. I'm not surprised that right. a shooter is beating that one, but I'm, I think that launched on all platforms at once. Um, I remember I did the interview with them and I think I was told that this is the first one that they've actually like tried to do all the platforms at once. Um, I think they, they were working on all of them, but I think this is the first one where they went. You're right. right You're right. It was a two month, it was a two out. month gap. Realm Royale was like their experimental. We're going to try and do both of them. And they came close. They missed by two months. Right, so this is the first one where they've actually rolled it out, and I, like you said, I don't know if that makes that big of a difference, but I kind of feel like just the genre makes a difference because MOBAs and battle royale, uh, you know, battle royales are are definitely popular, but I still feel like they're still a little bit more niche than just shooters. Jason, this this number surprise you all? I mean, it's it's one thing to be ahead, but it's another thing to be fifty percent ahead. It's probably what you bring up that it did release on all platforms. Although, man, I'm surprised it was bigger than than Global Agenda. Really? 
<laughs> but yeah, it, even so, it does surprise me a little bit, even going beyond. I, mean, I guess, I mean, Smite came out like seven, eight years ago. So even even if it had launched on everything that existed back then, there's just more people now, I think. More, more likely gamers are going to be playing stuff. Than right, and that was now. my like kind of, look, I get if it's probably beating Smite today. But well, even this was like very back clear then, yeah. that, like, for all of time, that's the part. And and again, not to disparage the game, it's fine. I still have it installed. Great. I still play it occasionally. I don't, you know, I'm not going to complete a season pass or anything, but I still play it occasionally. It's just, you know, it doesn't necessarily do anything earth-shattering, new, or different that isn't already out there. And to a large degree, that is... Hi Res's MO in a lot of games is let's take what works and refine it a little bit rather than try and break the mold in a lot of cases. You know, like adding a terrible card system to Paladins. Uh, <laughs> that definitely broke that mold. So it I just it surprises me. Surprises me. All right, moving on. We have another mini rapid fire round for you. That one was all about shooters. This one will be much shorter. It's a mini rapid fire, and this will be about card games. Now, technically, one of these pieces of news dropped last Friday, but the cast had already been recorded and was posted, so we're including it here, and then we'll cover some Hearthstone news. Q, Gwent is dropping a another patch and kicks off Season of the Cat. What does this mean for Gwent players? I mean, mostly the, the patch in and of itself is more or less one of those general things. Um, and it's just, uh, they, they didn't really reveal a whole lot about it. There might be more news now that I just haven't seen, but they didn't really reveal a whole lot about the season of the cat, as they're calling it. And it's really weird that they call it the season of the cat because the image that goes with it is a bird woman. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I'm very confused. Um, but they they and uh, basically they announced that this season will be closing on November third, and then the new season will you know kick in. But as far as like major details, there weren't any. The patch notes they it was general, like just general stuff. Uh, uh you know, updating leader abilities. Um, they've changed something to what they're calling spam abilities. Uh, and they're also adding, adding a veteran keyword or fixing veteran keyword contracts so that they track progress properly, which is great for people <laughs> who like their progress right. to be tracked properly. I, I, in uh, fact, I demand that my progress be tracked <laughs> properly. I don't know how light you two feel on this, but I demand that my progress be tracked accurately. I mean, unless they want to give me an 80% and- win rate in Rocket League and not the 46 that I have right now. Well, there you go. And then the like the other thing that that kind of stood out, but it was just because of the wording in it, is that there's something going on involving Harpy Love. So <laughs> I just get like steered clear. Yeah, of, that's of a that. uh, yeah, uh, I, odd it, phrase, <laughs> right? So, but yes, yeah, as, as far as the 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 rest of it, they they just hadn't dropped a lot of details. So, well, Gwent. There you go. You still have like a month for this, though. This current season doesn't actually close till November 3rd. So expect some more. Yeah, so they're going to do that thing. They're going to do that thing where they just tease out bit by bit. Yeah. And then you finally know everything like two days before the season starts. The game's not big enough to do that. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I hate when like really tiny games dole it out like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, or or, not, or even when big games do it, but the update is small. Like there's really only two things being added. They're tiny. They're kind of offshooty stuff. And then maybe a dozen quality of life, small micro changes or patch fixes and stuff. And then you get like three press releases, one a week about this. You're like, come on. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like, and we talked about this earlier too. And they have a, a seasonal mode uh, switcheroo after two turns, a player switch hands. And it's it's like we talk about the limited time mode. It's like, yeah, you just toss that in there for the sake of tossing something in there, I guess. Yeah. But uh, on the other side of the card game spectrum, let's say a little more RNG. Uh, Jason, you were taking a look at Hearthstone. You used to be a big time Hearthstone player way back when it launched. Mm-hmm. Uh, you enjoyed the hell out of that game. Uh, in the article, you talk about, you know, probably falling out of it, maybe touching it once a week, once every two weeks, if that, here and there. 
And uh, what you had to discuss was what uh, August Dean Ayala had to discuss, which was, hey, if we could change something and get you back as a lapsed player, come on back, what would it be? And they've asked this kind of like periodically, maybe once a year or so. You have a very particular thing that you want that would con- you would make you consider coming back, but you seem to be in the minority on this one. Oh yeah, because everyone else hates the RNG or whatever, which you know it's it's that's going to be a part of Hearthstone no, no matter what. So, you know, deal with it, bro. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, what I bring up is like the reward system, which is basically non-existent. You get your three daily quests, and that's about it. And since then, there have been so many games that come up with so many different kind of reward systems, whether it's battle passes or you know long form missions or something like that. Just all sorts of different achievements you can do and this and that and Hearthstone, it, like I you know, talk about Overwatch, it's, the same, it's in the same deal. They, they just don't have that. They just have a little bit of very simple couple of missions, and that's all. Now, Overwatch is going to get its sequel, which is probably going to address that a little better. Hearthstone, though, I don't know if they're ever going to have such a significant revamp that they're going to change all that. So I don't know if that's something that's going to be in there or not ever. And But I wish they did have something. Because I, I feel stupid because I know that that's what gamers. That's what companies put into their games with little dopamine hits. Hey, you got an achievement. You got exactly. this. You got that. And I still like it. I still I like it at least better than the virtually nothing that you get out of Hearthstone. There, there could be a little bit more, a little bit less than like, oh, you took three steps in the world in MMO. Get an achievement. Yeah, okay. Steam, Steam achievement. That's a little reach level three. It's like, oh, awesome. Yeah, no, maybe you don't need that much, but you need a little bit more. I think than what Hearthstone has right now. I fell out of Hearthstone, Hearthstone so fast, and I love I love <laughs> TCGs and CCGs, but I I just this one even way back was just too. I was like, ah, I don't like how random some of this feels. It just wasn't for me. Um, so I would be more on the. Uh, I'd like a little more strategy, and here it's there's a lot of RNG on particular particular deck builds and things like that. So, um, I I can't argue with the success of it or the simplicity of it not to call the game simple or you know easy or not strategy at all but the simplicity of how fast a game can take place and how how easy it is to pick up for a new player uh at least initially before they realize holy shit uh i'm gonna have to spend a lot of money to catch up uh (laughs) and have a competitive deck but i i just personally like something a little more with a little more strategy jason we're gonna talk about one more topic before we slide over to the weekly bombs here uh, we're going to talk a little bit about spell break. <laughs> really? Yes. Wow. We'll talk a little bit about spell break. Apparently, spell break <laughs> has had some of its ideas for a very long time. And it's, it's just funny to me to see the new come out, right? Spell break just comes out. And then you look back and you talk to the developers, which game industry uh, biz did, uh, game industry, games industry dot biz did. And you find out, you know, none of this is, like, new. Although the game is brand new, they were looking at this years and years ago, including the crossplay, the ranged magic focus. The, You know, they were looking... This was, They were kind of doing this before Fortnite and even PUBG were really things, Jason. And they're, they said, crossplay is hard. Mm-hmm. It's very hard. I'll volley... And I'll let you spike. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So, yeah, they talked about first of all, as you said, as you said before, the the, the guy that talked. You to can't see it on camera, but Q is shaking her head, rubbing her temples, <laughs> giving the Picard face palm. Uh, but yeah, they talked to their CEO Seth Sivak, and he said that first of all, he believes that pretty much every game should be cross progression, but he knows that it's hard. He says it's not as easy as I wish it was. Uh, I feel very strongly that every multiplayer game should be cross-platform with cross-progression, especially now where everyone is separated from each other and locked down. The idea that people aren't able to play with their friends because of a hardware choice seems crazy, right? Yes. Yes, right. Yes. So he said that there are three pieces that are coming online, Epic's online service, other things like that, that are making it a little bit easier. But some of that stuff is just not there yet. So hopefully two or three years from now, we're not having this conversation, but it is really difficult technically to do and also to do at scale. So yeah, it talks about raw technical challenge of building a standalone friend and social system, which I've seen in a lot of games, even when they're new on, on a single platform on Steam or something like that, having their in-game friends list match with the Steam friends list or whatever. 
So that could be an issue. And yeah, having that go across Steam and, and GOG and PSN and Xbox Live or whatever, I could see how that could be an issue, especially if, depending on how well the, the companies, the different companies are able to talk to each other and let you know that that can work out. So yeah, it's, it's probably more of a challenge than we give it credit for. Yeah, it is one of those things. That you're just like that should be easy now. It's twenty. Your current your current year argument, right? It's twenty twenty. Why is this still a thing? Q? Why can't they fix this? Uh, they. I thought this was interesting. This interview because they did delve into like the origins of the game. And again, this was started and kicked off back before Fortnite, back before PUBG. Really, they mentioned like H one Z one was more their battle royale. Uh, inspiration at the time as far as what was released, but they knew they wanted to do more of a fantasy take on it. Uh, they kind of did a Dota 2 mod prototype, then went with one more Viking themed and ended up with Spellbreak. They knew they wanted to get away from bullets and make it more like magic casting. Uh, but they also had this this like key primary goal cue, and I think this is where maybe Amazon might be lacking a little bit, um, is making a primary direction on things to kind of move in when it comes to a project. They wanted it to be very watchable, very streamable, and very shareable. And so every development decision in Spellbreak's life cycle so far has been kind of built around that core tenant. Is this shareable? Is this streamable? Is it watchable? And so far, seems to be going relatively well for them now i like this game i still have this installed i still stream this game there are definitely room for improvement but there always is going to be that it's like i but i feel like they've kind of succeeded so far in following that like core tenant of of where they wanted to take the game yeah, I mean, you are right. There there are lots of companies, including Amazon, that apparently just, they're just like, we'll just make a game. Mm. People will play it, hopefully. <laughs> um, so it is a good idea. It, it is it is a little kind of, I guess, weird when you think about it, that the idea behind a game, that these are the things that we want, have less to do with the actual gameplay than just how shareable and watchable it is. <laughs> for it, then hey you know how i mean i guess the players have to enjoy it to to for it to be shareable and watchable so yeah. the two things kind of go in there together but it does feel a little bit weird that the the primary goal is you know let's just make sure this is something that people will view but it is again uh kind of like leads back to that whole you know just esports thing in general right like i i think You'll find you, you, we probably find that over time we'll get more companies making games designed to 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 cater to the people who don't necessarily want to play but definitely want to watch what's going on. Like, um, and in you know, like even High Res does that kind of thing. They 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 work with the pro players to to get the kind of gaming they want. But there's a lot of focus too on on making games that are watchable. Hence the the bright colors and you know, the things like that, because it's way easier to watch something like Spellbreak or a high-res game than it is to sit and watch, you know, Brown the game. <laughs> like, oh, Valorant. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it's easier to see from a viewer's perspective what's going on. And it also draws in players, right? You sit and watch it and you see these people having a really good time and you decide, hey, I want to try playing that because it looks fun. Yep. So... You know, from those perspectives, it's it's a, a pretty good idea, but it does help to have some sort of idea of what your goals are when starting a, you know, massive entertainment project. And and you would think they would kind of learn it from movies, like the movies that end up failing are the <laughs> ones where they go from director and writer to director right. and writer, right? Mm -hmm. Like, there's no general idea of what the thing is going to be. It's just like, we're just going to make a Batman film. And maybe it'll work someday, 10 years later, you know, like when it's been through like six directors or whatever. And you just can't approach these massive projects in that way. So, yes, having a, a, a main idea of what you want out of the game is probably a good thing. Agree. That said, Jason, I do question, yeah, even as a fan of the game, how shareable and watchable it really is. Uh, one, 
it's not getting shared. <laughs> I mean, the, it is still a, t- a tiny player base, uh, you know, relatively speaking, comparatively speaking to, you know, other battle royales and things. Uh, and even more importantly, I don't know how watchable it is for somebody that's not already familiar with the game. Like you, I feel like you have to be familiar with this game to watch it and understand, well, wait a minute, weren't they just using fire and ice? Where'd the earth stuff come from? I don't, oh, they swapped. They did the, oh, there's all these spell effects going on. Like sometimes even playing the game, I have a hard time going, well, uh, okay, okay, yeah, that's why I died. Or okay, that's why I got that kill, even though I've missed with this. There's a lot going on, I think, sometimes on that screen. And I again, I enjoy the game. And I can appreciate their drive towards an image, but I don't know if they've achieved that yet, uh, particularly on the shareable, watchable front. I mean, if you go look right now, it's not a big number on Twitch. It's not a big number right now on Twitch. 857 viewers, that's yeah. in fact, right now. Uh, but I think kind of what that gets to is what Q was talking about when talking about it being, uh, yeah, when all else fails, make it colorful and pretty. Don't make it brown the game, so... Which I kind of want to play now. I want to play Brown the game. Uh, but but that, yeah, I mean, if, if it's that, got... Isn't that Warface? Like, even more than Valorant, isn't isn't that Warface? <laughs> oh, God. Or but yeah, Vigor. I mean, I was thinking Vigor of all the Call of is absolutely and... Brown the game. Yeah. I mean, it depends. Maybe then you almost have, like, you know, we talk about the difference between casual and hardcore players. Maybe that's also casual and hardcore viewers. Yeah, the hardcore viewers want to see the complete strategy and know exactly the moves that are being made. Casual viewers want to see stuff blow up. Yeah, you know, and, and pretty exp- and fire and ice. Who cares if you were doing fire and now you're doing ice? Just just blast it out there and blow shit up and jump around the map. And who cares? Woo, fun. So there's, there's something to be said for like both aspects of that as well. For people who watch NASCAR just for the crashes, you know. Fair enough. I can't watch NASCAR, man. I just no, never not could. I mean, I'd love no. to be in a race car driving it, but I, I ugh, no, I wouldn't want that either. Just doesn't do it for me. All right, let's slide over and do the weekly bombs. Jason, you're up, sir. Uh, I'm going to give a bomb to The Good Place, which is a sitcom that was on uh, NBC, I guess, for a few years. Just wrapped up last year, and it was on Netflix. So I just I'd heard about it, I watched it a little bit, and or I'd heard about it a little bit beforehand. Heard people talk about it, so finally looked it up on Netflix. Gone through the first three seasons in like a couple weeks. Yeah, you know, back in the spring when we all needed something to watch on Netflix. Uh, they just put up season four last week, so I went through all that, finished it up this morning, and uh, I like it. I like it a lot, so check it out if you want a, a, sit, a sitcom with philosophical overtones. All right. Q. Um, I'm actually going to give it a bomb to Skillshot Media, which used to be part of hi and is not anymore. Yeah, it's company it's number 70 balls. that was well, under the hi banner and is no longer now. under there. It's its own company now. Um but they they're constantly doing uh, a lot of community oriented things like recently they did the whole fall guys to get people to vote and everything but the most recent project is um bringing uh licensed therapists in to games with people to to so that they can you know so if you need it you can get a little bit of therapy from home while playing a video game with your therapist and they've set it up to where, uh, at least for the first hour of it, if you want to try it out, um, you can do for free. I have not figured out yet if it is specifically limited to Rogue Company, because they kind of tied it to that in the thing. But I just think it's a neat idea. I think it's a great idea, too. You know, A lot of people either can't get help, don't want to get help in that certain setting, and you know, going out to an office or having a Zoom call... Uh face-to-face stuff. I, I think it's a great idea. I hope it, it helps some people. I do question, though, the fact that it's, you know, taking place in a shooter game. Like, <laughs> that kind of seems a little <laughs> a little mm, for me. But, again, whatever people use to relax, and that's the whole point, is, you know, be in a relaxed, comfortable area. Um, I'm going to give a dub bomb to Twitch chat. It's been a while, uh, probably since, like, Game Breaker days that we were doing p- the actual podcasts themselves live. Uh, I love doing it, so dub bomb to Twitch chat for coming, hanging out, giving feedback throughout the show, your points. Especially love doing this show live and going to love doing some more of them live uh, coming up. So dub bomb to Twitch chat. Before we get over to the viewers, 
just in case you've forgotten your bombs. Dub bomb is something good. An A bomb <laughs> is something bad. That's how you remember it. That's how you remember it. And while you're surfing the internet, check out GamerPower.com, our sister site. Totally free for you as a user. There is no option for premium memberships or anything like that. You just come, you sign up for an account, you get free stuff. Whether it's in free-to-play games, buy-to-play games, or hell, even sometimes the full games themselves. You can track all of your interests. You'll get notifications if you want on games that you might like or games you've claimed giveaways from before. Jace saying, great site, redeemed stuff already in chat. Yeah, I mean, it's totally free for you. Not looking for uh, anything. The developers are fronting the expense on this one to get this up and running for you guys. So check it out, GamerPower.com. Sign up, and it'll even keep track of how much you've never spent by claiming all the different giveaways from there. So, yeah. Nifty, nifty stuff. All right, from the viewers, Guardian Bay. I think Bale. needs the chart. What's that? Look at that. Look at this bomb. I think he needs the chart. I know. That's why I went to the chart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Guardian Veil vale first in chat says, De bomb uh, okay. to Lotro lore. There's books full of it. A bomb that there are too many <laughs> games coming out. I can't keep up. It has been a pretty busy release window. <laughs> there, there's lore books for the Lord of the Rings online? Gosh, I wonder what those are called. <laughs> I wonder who wrote those. Uh, Some old guy like 80 years ago. Jeez. From the viewers, Raggerty says, Dub bomb to the Genshin Impact download for taking a whole day for it to download. A bomb for dipping into Genshin Impact to test it out before uh, doing other things, then realizing I spent all day playing it. And as Jason pointed out, I'm assuming you mean those reversed. <laughs> A bomb being bad for the download time, dub bomb for. Although maybe you like you're like, hey, that's cool. The download took a whole day. You know what? I don't like that my whole day is gone. So I don't know. Whatever way you meant that, <laughs> uh, Jason, go ahead, take the next one. Uh, NG Sebastian says the amount of players, the amount of player base for a free game with gotcha is far higher than even a one dollar price game with no gotchas. Absolutely, that's why for game devs, sometimes use the free game with gotcha mechanics to draw a huge player base. Gotcha mechanics is such a bad rep due to many games, many game devs implementing it, but creating unfair PvP advantage, splitting up the player base into free to play and play to win, conflicting with each other. For Genshin Impact, as there is no direct PvP content or feeling of con content stuck behind paywall. If you are still feeling pressured, getting addicted, spending tons on gacha, and then complaining, the blame is on, on the you. That's what it says, on the you. For your own lack of self-discipline. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't argue with that the gacha is implemented in a fair, in, you, know, you know, a fair way in Genshin Impact. It is totally ancillary, you know, but there is that whole, hey, we're going to give you a taste of a character and part of the story and then take them from your party and the only way to get them is from here. And by the way, it's random. So I wouldn't put it all on a total lack of self-discipline like NG does here. Um, you know, there's also the whole addictive personality thing that totally throws self-discipline out of this discussion. Uh, so I, I think there's a little more nuance to it than that. But yeah, I would agree with you that you know it's a PvE game. I'm I'm never gonna spend a dime in it because I just don't care if I have those characters or not. Uh, so yeah, Q, go ahead. Uh, Dan, while well, gotcha mechanics don't bother me and definitely won't deter me from playing, it feels tacked on and out of place in Genshin Impact, even if it isn't exactly intrusive or detrimental to the enjoyment of the game. I'll end up dropping a few bucks in support of the game to keep it going, but I'd rather they flesh out the game a bit more and own the gameplay digitally or physically paying $60 rather than just having granted access. Yeah, and that was a point we made. And again, to NG's point, that's exactly what MiHoYo told us. They wanted to expand their player base. That's why they made it free instead of you know a $30 single-player experience just to buy it and be done. Yeah, they're, they're going to make, and they have, by all <laughs> reports we've seen, They've made boatloads of cash that they would not have made had they charged $30 for it. So, uh, Go ahead, Jason. Or wait, is that mine? It's yours. I'm going to give it to me so I can pronounce it wrong. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> so, oh, that's right. I forgot about this one. <laughs> so, to call 2399s is the bomb to a Wilfredo. He's the first person to actually pronounce my name right in all the time I've been posting here, my man. I what is it? I I, I said to call too. Is, that, is, it, <laughs> is it not that? 
<laughs> is it Tikal? Is it Fred? I uh, didn't even realize what was going on with this one. I've said it wrong. I said, you know, Tikal, and uh, I think most of the time I've said Tikal 2399. It is Tikal. Uh, and yeah, I didn't even put I've... anything together until I saw Wilfredo reply to them on YouTube saying, yeah, I just thought of Method Man. And they replied saying, yeah, that's it. And I was like, how did I not... How did I not put that together? <laughs> like, oh my God, after all that time. So, yeah. You see, there's an old board game based on the uh, the Mayan rune to call. So that's why I always pronounce it like that. Ah. That's what I got to find. Uh, question of the week last week. What are your reviews for Genshin Impact? I know a ton of you are playing of it and take uh, talking about it on our streams each day. So chime in with your kind of condensed thoughts here. So Threadhead chimes in. With the huge success of Genshin Impact, I predict tons of cash-in attempts on the MMO but actually single-player plus gotcha paywall for characters model. It's going to be the next big thing like MOBAs, hero shooters, battle royales that the slower companies will still be trying to copy five years from now when it's too late. If you don't know what I mean, check out Creative Assembly actually still developing a hero shooter and a mobile CCG in 2020. Um, and I, I, I can see that, but I, I think that doesn't, that's not... Um, taking into account that it has actually been a thing for a quite a long time, just more a mobile thing right now. Um, now you might start to see it leak into PC more and more and more. Uh, go ahead, Jason. They're working on a hero shooter? <laughs> You're working on a hero shooter, aren't you? Seriously, I don't know anything about that one. Because ECG is, yeah, whatever. I agree, but... Hmm. Rick Craw says, Genshin Impact is a good game and really stupid not to have been a single-player game set, set at a fair price. It would have sold plus millions. It's a good free game currently, and when I call in two to play, it stays that way. There you go. Cute. Uh, it depends, Freak. I like Genshin Impact in general, but I don't have the standard QWERTY keyboard, and you can't change the keyboard mapping. Come on, miho yo, it's 2020. <laughs> Yeah, that I don't understand. And they've said that it, it you know, they're going to work on getting that in there. I was stunned when we were on launch day messing with it and we could change the controller but we couldn't rebind the controller in any way and then couldn't rebind the keyboard. It was like, what is this? Mm. Weird. Uh Raggerty says it's been I've been oh look a shiny playing it for 3 days <laughs> <laughs> as of oh a chest now and it's fun. The one thing I'd like to see change the most is the party swap easier to be gotten to. All I've found is having to hit escape and waiting for Paimon to float away, then changing things and being brought back into the escape slash Paimon menu. On a side note on Paimon, I wish they went with something else. She's just become so annoying. It came to a head during a quest where she acted like a spoiled kid not getting her way and nothing is more annoying to me. You can't pet the dogs or cats either, so that's also a negative. <laughs> Overall, this is a lot of fun. If you're curious about it, it's worth the three-day download. <laughs> Edit. About a day later, I've hit 20, and the battle pass is now open for me. It's something nice to see in something like this, and the $10 for access with a 20 for premium-ish version is okay. The rewards didn't look like $10 or $20 worth. If you got more pools or possible special skins... That would be worth the price. Yeah, so for those of you that don't know, when you hit Adventure Rank 20, a battle pass uh, does open up for you, a season pass. Uh, go ahead, Q. Uh, a Gigamon. Genshin is amazing, period. Pretty quick, pretty quick. Jason. Revy John says, I'm not one to care for cute, adorable games. I like realistic and grit, but Paimon is the cutest little thing I've, in all caps, cutest little thing I've ever seen. So apparently John is not annoyed by uh, by it being whiny. Paimon is emergency food. Paimon is divisive. <laughs> <laughs> Paimon is absolutely divisive. Well, look at the next guy. Yeah, he definitely has his opinion of it. <laughs> Gas Master says, I've chosen to be a dick towards Paimon, even to the point where I'm playfully cursing at her through my screen. The game itself is fun. Graphics, gameplay, yada, yada, minus the gotcha system, which I'm not spending a single cent. While traveling the land, you kind of have to keep yourself occupied somehow. I wish I chose to be I wish I chose to be an ass to my companion. Edit from what the website says about her, 
I'm in love with Bidu. She'll be my main if slash when she's available. I'd rather have Navi, LOL. I got Bidu hey, listen. my pools, uh, my free pools thing. But it was four star, but I got her. Jason, what do you yell? Oh, hey, listen. <laughs> Navi. Yeah. yeah, Navi. Go ahead, Jason. Finish it off. I've never even played that game, but I just know that. Except Kobayashi's question of the week. Genshin is pretty good, especially for a Chinese mobile gacha game, which are three things that all individually typically indicate something is going to be shit. Maybe this is the one that signals a shift in quality for the model and pushes it from a small casual market in the West to be more of a mainstream gaming thing like it already has been in Asia. Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised that all the websites, like all the mainstream sites are like talking about how big this is and how great it is when it's like, we, when we first heard about it, like back in February, I was like, oh yeah, another mobile Chinese RPG, whatever, yeah, blah blah, anime thing, yeah, you know, blah blah. But yeah, it's like, it's 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 pretty big. I don't know how else to put it. Yeah, Q lives in in the world. Yeah. So. I I do, and the funny thing is, is, I was watching Mr. Happy stream the other day, and he said this, the exact same thing I said. This is my life now. Yep, yep, yep. All right, question of the week this week, going with one of our topics earlier, what could Hearthstone do to get you back? If you are a lapsed player like Jason or somebody that's totally quit like me, what could Hearthstone do to change things up to get you to jump back in and check it out? Let us know in the comments below. While you're there, don't forget your weekly bombs. Dub bomb for something good. A bomb for something bad in the world of gaming or life that's in for you. general. <laughs> And if you have a question for the panel, go ahead and put it uh, down there, and we'll be sure to bring it to next week's show. Until then, Q, where can everybody find you? Hanging out on Twitter at Quentin. Jason. On Twitter at Winter Informal, streaming at twitch.tv slash Jason Winter. I'm Mike Byrne. You can follow me personally right there on Twitter at MagicMan1. But more importantly, follow at MMO Bomb so we can tweet at you all the latest news, articles, giveaways, first look videos, and so much more. Until next week, gang, stay safe. We'll see you on the servers.